Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another On the Sensors production. Today, I am joined by two of our OTS crew members. We've got Drac and right. Polyfly. So we actually have Drac with us here today in sort of a dual role. So Drac obviously is, is a key, you know, sort of founding member of, of OTS, um, but also <laughs> don't blush. No, and, uh, and and but Drac is also uh, involved with the Coruscant Initiative as a designer. And, uh, and he's here today to share with us some awesome TCI spoilers. So, um, and just for everyone's awareness, uh, TCI's next set is coming out this month. That's the plan, November of 2021. Um, you know, stay tuned for more information on, on the actual release date. But, you know, we'll put a link up to their Discord, put a link up to their website. You know, so stay tuned for more information on that. But it is called Altered Paths, and uh, it is coming out here very soon. So... Drac and Polly, we've got some awesome TCI spoilers. Maybe before though, we get into that stuff. I, you know, just Drac, tell us, man. Like, how did you get involved with TCI, and and maybe even before that, like, what inspired you to to try your hand at, at design? Right. Obviously, yeah. we we all know we've seen you play Destiny. You're you're a very strong player, but like, how did you kind of make that shift? Well, yeah, I, I bought the set, started off again, and I was bought the sets, and then was like going on the deck build there late at night and going, oh. I really like this character. I bet they've got a cracking card. No, they don't. <laughs> um, so, and I had all these ideas in my head of like, like cards and abilities that I hadn't seen before that I thought would be really cool. This is a website that I'm sure we've all seen somewhere where you can make your own like simple, simple enough cards. Right. And me and my local just started doing that, and just cracking out cards. And then the more I did it, the more I realized, kind of like, there's loads of little ideas here. That are just like are just sitting on like a Google Drive somewhere. I can totally make these into cards. No one to play them, but I'll yeah, you know, I'll I'll play them. I'll make it. I'll bring it to some games or something. See what happens. Um, and then I heard about TCI. There was the post in there. It's just God from Isaac months and months ago. Um, just like clearance and stuff up about them. Um. And it said like there was this other group who had cards coming out, had a tourney, so I was like, okay, I'll play it. Let's see how it is. And I went, I was like, oh, these are real cool, aren't they? For not knowing not knowing that they exist at all, and then suddenly going, here's an entire set of beautifully made, really nicely played cards. Um kind of thought, okay, yeah, that's that's cool. I sent um I a message after and just said, you know, these are awesome, is there any way I could get involved and he was just like oh wow well, thank you for that yeah that totally is and it kind of just went from there of um you know jumping on calls and being like so what what would you want would you want to would you want to play test would you want to design we just want to like, give little ideas i was like yeah i'll i'll design that's it excellent man so you you uh you're the master of your own destiny there you were like i i want to do this i'm going to reach out and see what happens and 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 now here you are so Nice. Making cards for characters he wants to play with. Yeah. Basically, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember back in the day on, on our server here on the sensors, all the hall guys, they were making their own cards and posting them. And, yeah. and I do remember you even like private messaging me, Drac, some of your ideas and stuff. Like this is way before, you know, it was just like for fun, man. It, even, it was the art. I think some of it was your original art too. So yeah, you definitely had that creative edge and, so good for you, man. I'm glad to see you're putting all that to use. And... Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I just, I just thought, you know, there's so many. Obviously, Destiny's covered so many of the main characters, you know, loads. But then there's some that I'm surprised that they didn't do. It's like, well, if if now anyone can make a card realistically, you don't need some doctor or <laughs> anything. Anyone can cook up a card, then why can't? Yeah. Yep. So maybe before we get into the spoilers. You know, tell us a little bit about, like, the, if, if you can, right? I know it's not always 100% clear, but was there a, th a general theme for eternal conflict and then parting words and then upcoming altered paths? Like, what were the overall themes? So, parting words, I had no involvement in whatsoever. That was a ton that got me into it, so I'm not 100% sure. 100% sure. Um, so, did I just say eternal conflict? I had nothing to do with. Okay. Pine words. That was all about the Clone Wars. 
There was Clone no, Wars. Like, got it. There was no like theme apart from every single card was from the Clone Wars, which is a very strong theme. Yeah, um, and in that we thought you know every like cool character, every cool scene, whatever. Let's give it a give it a card. But there's no like philosophical thing. Altered Paths is all about how characters develop. It's all about um, you may have a character who starts in certain paths and then alters paths. They change direction. They go from light to dark. Maybe their goals change. Maybe their affiliation. Um, some of the spies that we have so far, like the big ones of the set, the ones we really want to push Revan faster. If you know anything about Revan, you know he switches sides more times than anything. Um, but the main thing was, was we know so many characters that change from side to side Luke, Vader, Kylo. So many that change. So let's do a set all about that and how easy it is for them to change in this. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about this in a, in a recent video, but like when you talk about neutral characters, um, you know, what is that line that gets drawn to where, like, or what's the threshold, so to speak, when they when they they can't really be called neutral anymore? They're either good or objectively evil. Right. <laughs> so, right. Well, as soon as transformations came out and they had Anakin flipping to Vader. We know they kind of confirm like, yeah, that is a really cool theme, and this is <laughs> this is a mechanic now. Let's use it. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a cool so, thing overall in all the games is the way that the game can transform as you play it. Mm. So yeah, and that's you know a little bit why I wanted to ask about the themes of the prior sets is, and, and that's that's the beauty of Star Wars Destiny is like you could have I bet you could if you really wanted to you could have an entire set dedicated to like one episode. Mm. Right, oh, one yeah. film or one episode of a show. Like, there's just so much nuance, and uh, yeah, and like you said, sometimes people start off one way and then they shift, they change, they take so a different path. To be had for everything. And sometimes what I think gets missed sometimes is like this: this game is Star Wars. There's so many little fun scenes and whatever. Let's not break down into the decimal points of how strong a card is. You know, it, it just make cool stuff. And then just make cool stuff. Bring it to life. Have the cool stuff. And play the cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be the new TCI slogan on the website. Just make cool stuff. <laughs> Bang on. <laughs> yeah. All sure. right. So, shall we get into it, Polly? What do you think? Let's get into these cards that he brought yeah. with him. All right. So, my gifts. We, well, your gifts to us. Thank you. We will do the event, and then we shall do the support. And then we'll do the character last. Sound good? That'll work. Sounds perfect. All right, here we go. So first up, we have Tactical Withdraw. It is a red villain zero cost event. It says discard one of your supports from play to remove a die. Mm -hmm. Then you may shuffle one of your supports in play into your deck to remove a die. Wow. Okay. So... Talk about just cleaning your board state a little bit to stay alive. <laughs> I, I I like this card a lot. I like this card for the fact that I get to reuse some of my supports that maybe have ran out of purpose. Merchant Freighter comes to mind. You know, you've already tapped it for all three resources. Mm. If you're not playing an eject or if you're not pay playing a piloting deck, like this is this is a great card to you know, either discard to get removal or slide it back into your deck to then possibly draw it again. It's great against mill. Um, I mean, it's it's great. Old school, old. I used to play old school Afra with the murder droids and bubble shields. Like doing so much damage to yourself to cycle through your deck quickly was key in that deck. And this essentially allows you to keep reusing a bubble shield over and over and over again. Slide one back into your deck and then play it again and do two damage. Slide it back into your deck. Like. It's, this gives those supports a lot of versatility after they've you know lived their life essentially. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And it, again, it's one of those. It's like I don't know if you've seen. This is from an episode of Clone Wars, and it's when Dooku gives the order to. This, it's I think it's Alderaan. That they're on. It's like yeah, we're going to lose to the rebels. That's very fun. And it's it's there. That's what the that's what the yeah bringing the bringing the supports out to defend themselves and um and the court and it's really. Call it prolonged war doesn't interest me. Yeah, um, the art the art is great. Yeah, it's kind of taking a shot. 
Um, but again, it's it, for me, it's one of those. It's like well, it's nice to think of the theme of uh, what would this card actually do. Okay, now we've got that. Well, let's actually balance it a little bit. And in that respect, you know, versatility wise, you choice to have one or two, and then you have to you have to discard one to then put one into your deck. You need two supports. So it just it makes it interesting to play around, but then keeps that theme running through it. Yeah. I love the idea of like Merchant Freighter is a perfect example. I'm sure there's others, right, that you know you would want to hit with that event, but I just love the idea of you know, there, there's sort of this used up, washed up thing on your board state. You're like, it's just taking up space, right? You know, you know in games that we ask, we type, type to the other player or see the other player, do you mind if I move this? I'm not going <laughs> to Exactly. <laughs> right. You know, this thing's exhaust, like, it's tapped out. Do you mind if I just put it over here, you know, informally? So, but yeah, I love that th this is a way to, to, to recycle those things. So, and I think we didn't mention this yet, but Drac... You design every card. Every card we're going to talk about today. You were the the sort of main designer, right? I was, yeah, yeah. These perfect. Are my... These are your babies. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I think it's I think it's a great card. It's 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 removal, but it's late game removal, right? When you're scrounging around to try to keep yourself alive late, and you've got this, you know, dead support that can't do anything, right? You can at least discard one of your supports to remove mm -hmm. a die. If you have a second one, then you get to remove two dice. You know, um, yeah. it's great. It's a great card. It's a great design. It's a great. I mean, yes, it's zero cost, but it's a great trade off. I think it works really, really well. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And so, Drac, was there a particular like little one drop support that you had in mind to be used with this? I mean, like Merchant Freighter, hopefully, yeah. right? That was thought about. But were there others? In in testing, one that I mean, used was Tech Team, tapping a Tech Team. Um, Bringing out something big and then okay, that's exhausted. Usually the staple, the base staple is two resources to remove anything, one with a condition. This being the condition that you have a supply in place, so it seems pretty reasonable to do that. You've got a yeah. of and you've taken the money off it. They're just making back value. But the fact that you can make it, make it one for one, and then make it another one for one in one card makes it a little bit above the curve. Vipers as well. Viper Pro Droids are in one that I kind of thought, why would I spend the money when I could spend zero and just take the dice anyway? Um, right. So any, just anything little with this, really. But then the other thing is that if you've got something big, um, obviously the value of it goes down, but if your character's going to die, which would you rather live? Right, you got to make that trade right. off. Mm. Yeah. I like I like that you bring up Viper Probe Droid because there's many decks that we play because VPD has the caveat of spotting what a red or a red leader, mm. right? So if you don't just have red, yeah. just yeah. if you don't have that red character out anymore, like if you're not playing a mono, then it's dead yeah. anyway, sitting on your board. Or maybe you lay it early and you find out I'm actually up against Mill. There's no point in having this, right? This right, is a... and then you just 100 percent you're happy to just ditch that. So you know, and I think we sort of already said this, but. You don't have to do the second part, right? You may shuffle one of your supports in play into your deck to remove basically a second die. So you don't have to do the second part, but obviously the second is better than the first. So right, which, it's, which kind of makes it interesting. So it means you have to lose one to then get the, as Polly was saying, like Bubble should get the possible benefit of getting one back. Right. Yeah. Very uh, tactical withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, fits its name perfectly. Yes. Because, I mean, yeah. and we've all been in those late stages of the game where you're trying to walk through every interaction. If I do this, then I, can I survive that? And if I do this, but if they roll that, what do I have to do and what do I have to have? Mm. And this just gives yeah. you, this essentially gives you two up to two pieces of removal on the board with one card. Like, you don't have to be holding the removal in your hand. You hold the one card in your hand. The removal is already on the board. Yeah. Very true. Absolutely. And, you know, like you said, Polly, late game, a chip in the chair is sometimes oh, yeah. all you need. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we possibly have a look at something that you wouldn't want to use this card? Let's. <laughs> let's make that transition, good friends. All right. You guys ready for the next one? Yeah. So. All right. Here we go. We have the HMP Predator. Ooh. Support Artillery Droid. Look at this thing. It's a beast. 
Um, oh, it's got a parallel die. Is that? That's the Grom Battalion. Grom Battalion. Grom Battalion. I knew yeah. I recognized that. Yes. Okay, so this is a five cost red villain support artillery droid. After you activate this support, you may give one shield to each of your droids. It's got a power action. If each of an opponent's characters are damaged, you may ready the support. Wow. Can, that is... Considering the last set for TCI, right, Jack, was all based on Clone Wars. Like, mm -hmm. droids fits into this perfectly. Like, this is such a keyword... I mean, it's a keyword soup card, but it's such good keywords. And there's not a ton of artillery keyworded cards in all of destiny there's a handful uh runaway boomas comes to mind because i used to play jar jar and yep. uh, you know <laughs> uh, i used to play that deck all the time but um i play gungans but there's not a lot of artillery uh so that's a that's a really unique keyword i think there are a few events that i think do have something to do with artillery um so mm -hmm. this makes it this makes it pretty pretty cool in that aspect yeah so i love the parallel die you know i love seeing that i mean I love the thought that goes that gets put into the parallel, like the decision to make a parallel at a mm -hmm. parallel die. And maybe you could talk more about that, Drac. But like, I know for someone like me and, and you, Polly, and we have large collections. Mm -hmm. Like while we're waiting for our officially printed cards from Aegis or Kingwood or whoever to come in, it's like or sometimes for, you just want to roll the dice. You just want to play with them. And the fact, or for somebody to three D print dice, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like you don't want to wait. You just want to go to your box, grab them. So I love that. So yep. I don't know. Maybe Jack, real quick. Like, what is the design thought there? Like, when do you say let's use a parallel die versus let's just do something new? Well, there's reasons for us that it's great to use parallel die, and there's reasons for you that it's great to use parallel die. Uh, let's start with us. So for us, if we use a parallel die, it means that we have more dice stuff in a set because we, there's only a set amount of dice that can allocate to a set. So that means that we can give other stuff that we think need it, dice, um, and then these kind of, we can change around a little bit in that respect. Um, another thing for us is that if we use a parallel die, like it's easier for us to like, reference a little bit to see what's been used from us. We, you know, we can see like these are the dice that have been used, these ones that are left. So there's cars like this still left to make. Um, for, for the people who are playing them, you know, it saves money for a start. It saves money in fat of actually getting the dice. Another thing is you may not necessarily like the card. You might like the ability on it, but you might not like the card. But maybe you really like Grand Battalion. It gives you a little bit of a choice. That's a very niche thing that I work like. I've kind of just come up with in my head. But if, yeah, it, it's a thing. Um, and I guess one last thing would be FFG were the masters of this game. No, we make cards now, but they were paid professionals to do this. If mm -hmm. they think these dice are good and they're fun, I'm going to believe that. So why wouldn't we reuse it? Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yep. So this thing is expensive. It is It is scary. It can ready itself. Um, Is this an auto-include in every red villain deck maybe not if you're moneyed if you're moneyed and you have at least two droids i'd say yes because we don't have that many of the big spots the other really nice thing is if you're doing it as like a little like reset thing in a town conflicts we had um a decent chunk of mods not necessarily the vehicle mods it's not a vehicle but we had a couple of drive mods that came with the droid because <clears throat> Um, if you're bringing stuff back in, then of course, having those little mods on it make it a bit of a beast. If it's giving each giving each of you droids one shield every time, it makes it, it makes it interesting. You talk about droid mods. There's a few droid mods in FFG, you know, mm -hmm. the later sets that come to mind. Um, Triple Zero Protocol Matrix. It's only one sticks on most of the sides, but it's a non-blank die. That can be a grappling arm on it. Grappling oh, arm. Ro rocket and rocket, booster, yeah. Yeah, rocket booster was exactly where I was going to go. Power action, the rocket booster, right? Um, yeah, no, it's crazy. neutral, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rocket Rock booster's neutral? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what I was alluding to 
maybe this isn't an auto include in every red villain deck. No. But if you're playing a particular character who we mm. may <laughs> shift into now, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> so shall shall we talk about our final spoiler guys, the, the character for today? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do it. So we have General Kalani, Ooh. justify justifiably arrogant. I love that. <laughs> so he's a uh, a red villain, fourteen seventeen elite. So and he's got the um, OG Krennic parallel die. Look at this two Which, gun. Go ahead. I, I was I was gonna let you finish. I was just gonna say justifiably arrogant, and he uses Krennic's die. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two gun, one focus, two discard, two disrupt, one money in a blank. And man, this you, you read we that wrong. This you, you read you read that wrong. This die is two gun, one focus, two focus, two disrupt, <laughs> one one focus. Or not two disrupt, exactly. two focus, one focus. Yeah, dude, yeah, his passive right? is so good. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and twelve health. I mean, so. What I was hinting at, too, of course, is if you read the power action, discard a card from your hand, deal two damage to one of your other characters and uh, to play a red or gray support from your discard pile. Increasing its cost by one or by two instead of its a droid support. Right. So if you, you know, depending on who you want to pair this guy with, you know, you power action him, you deal two damage to one of your other guys, and then you can play the HMP Predator for three instead of five. Right? I mean, that's the play. Mm. That thing coming out for three, that's just... That's that's a bad time for your opponent. And the Predator also has, after you activate the support, you may give one shield to each of your droids. He's a droid. Yep. That's right. So, and, you know, if I, I know we talked a little bit about maybe you pair this guy, Kalani, with um, Tarkin, Merciless Leader. Right. Yeah. Who I believe Tarkin came out in the, in the OG TCI set, right, Track Internal mm -hmm. Conflict? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's points... doing all sorts of little indirect things himself, you know. The the scary thing on the Predator, just going back to that, is that you don't get the power action. If you don't have that power action the same time you play it, it's not really that worth it. The power action swings out and does make it worth it more so. So if you have someone like Tarkin or just anyone who's doing indirect, then it yeah, it's worth getting out there. That's right, yeah, because you sort of need spray damage or ways to sprinkle damage. And you don't want to constantly be changing targets, right? Because you, you need those, you need each of your opponent's characters to be damaged to be able to ready the Predator. So that's a that's a great point. Well, so let's talk about not just switching targets, right? Like with inter indirect damage, priority target is a downgrade that mm. basically makes all indirect damage range damage, essentially. I mean, right? it's Hero. Oh, that's Jeez. right. It is Hero. That's right. Yeah. It is Hero. Never mind. Don't, don't disregard, disregard this fool. Sometimes it's hard to remember, like, what's here and what's neutral, right? Like the yeah. rocket booster. Um, but, I mean, you're right, though. A thousand cards in this game. We're not going to remember them all, are we? <laughs> so, again, Drac, I, I know, like, this was one that, you know, you designed. I know there's a funny story that goes goes into this guy, Kalani. You know, you, you remember you telling me, you know, months ago, um, when you were working on some stuff for TCI, like, one of the reasons why you liked this this character, right? It's sort of a funny story of like each iteration of him, right? Because he really is a tactical droid working for the separatists. There's different, you know, we kind of see different iterations of him throughout the show. It's not always just Kalani, right? There's like other versions of, but like every time we see that kind of a droid come on screen, there's like a deeper mm. and deeper well, voice, yeah, right? That's what I, I've, I've just remember. Yeah, I remember that conversation. It was me saying like every time the droids get a little bit bigger. So you go from the battle droid to a squeaky, and then every time you go up, and then these guys enter, and they sound terrifying. They sound like yeah. they smoke yeah. four cool. packs a day. <laughs> I don't know who's <laughs> going to be editing this, but I really hope they can insert the clip of him saying the quote on his card, because that, genuinely, without that quote, I wouldn't have made it. Do not underestimate our means. It's one little quote from characters that just throws me on like, that's really cool. Yeah. I want to play it. I want to win. And I want to say that quote. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, I love, I love this. I love the, the templating on this card. I love what he does. The fact that, you know, in most droid villain style decks, there are lots of blanks. I mean, I think back to the original battle droid deck that had a lot of mm. blanks on those. You needed focus. Like this dude 
gives you that focus. And if you don't need that yeah. focus, who cares? Like he's <laughs> so versatile. Like being, he is justifiably arrogant. Oh, you see two discard. I don't care if you keep those two cards. I'm gonna focus two dice. Yeah. Like, yep. Oh, it's so good. Well, that's what I, that's what um, the thinking was on that was. Kalani always had a contingency in place. You know, from about Kalani, everything had a contingency. He is right. never going to be stuck. He's never going to be stuck without something to do. Hence, his die has no pay size. Hence, it can always be used for focus or discount or whatever it's on. He's always got some sort of a plan or a contingency. He's a super tough. Yeah. What I really like about that, his effect, that his sides can be resolved as focus, is, is there's that mind game. And we saw this. Drac, we saw this with um, Undercover, the, the spoiler video we did a few weeks back. After you play this upgrade, um, or sorry, it has a power action on it. Reveal a random card. We'll, we'll throw it up. Reveal, reveal a random card from an opponent's hand. You may deal one indirect damage to yourself to discard that card. So they, they never know when that's coming. The same thing with Bodhi. Bodhi Rook. Power action. Each player loses a resource, mm -hmm. discards a card from their hand, deals an indirect damage to themselves, and removes one of their dice. Again, you never know when, when the opponent's going to choose to do that. And you so, sim exactly said what this set is all about. Yeah, you I love it. Know what what their motive is, mm -hmm. what they're going to do, what they're going for. Kalani himself changes sides. He ends up fighting the Empire in Rebels. All of them have some little change about them, a little tweak that you don't yeah. notice, and they're looking like, oh, that makes sense. Right. You know, he rolls out that two discard. A lot of people might be tempted to resolve that because the two discard, I don't care if you're milling or not, that's just a really strong side. You want to hit your opponent's hand if you can. Um, get rid of their rerolls, get rid of their upgrades, their mitigation. But like, is he going to resolve it as a two discard or a two focus? So with Kalani, I feel like you probably want to activate him last. What do you guys think? Like, you, you know, if you're playing supports or like a wide deck or something, you probably want to roll everything else out. And then you roll him out and like his dice are threatening his big focus sides or maybe this cards i don't know really really versatile I, I, I like that i think i would personally probably roll him out first just so that okay. if i do hit like a two disrupt or a two discard then now it makes my opponent like think you know if i roll out my next character am i going to use those as focus or disrupt me do i need to play my cards first like it puts your opponent in that rock in a hard place like what is that what is that kalani mm -hmm. player going to do Having yeah. him out last gives the your opponent the freedom to do whatever they want because there is no threat of because the dice have to be in the pool first in order for that to happen. So having those dice in the pool first, then whatever you roll out, now it makes your opponent think, okay, is he going to focus into something? Do I need to remove those dice right away, or is he going to use the two disrupt and make me lose my money? Like, I like rolling. Yeah, him out. I like rolling fair. him out first. Yeah, you might be right. I think maybe that is the preferred sequencing. Let's be honest. If he's if he doesn't roll damage, then you're looking at one of two symbols, right? Focus or whatever he rolls. I would rather, personally, my opponent use removal on his dice than any mm. of my big damage dice that I might roll into or focus into. Yeah. What I will say is, in testing, I played him, I played Tarkin one die, and a sneaky plot. Seen, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I always brought in Tarkin first but that was just because it was attacking and attacking well, dice yeah. is so strong so i think it is very much to do with a partner and True. what you're going for are you going to attack your opponent or are you going to build yourself and that hmm. really depends on just who he's with yeah yeah great point um so i know you know we'll have to start to close out somewhat soon here but i did just want to comment again like on the overall theme so i don't remember the episode you you talked about drac where kalani switches sides but I do remember in the bad batch one of the one of the like the key discoveries like we as an audience wanted to learn is like why did the empire switch to clone troopers or I'm sorry to stormtroopers like why did they stop the uh, the clone program or you know or even like why did they stop making droids and you know and it's just sort of this interesting question and we kind of learn a little bit about that but then there's also that one episode I'm pretty sure it's bad batch where is it Bad Batch or Rebels? Oh, I'm getting mixed up now. Or they're on a planet and they get like one last little battle to, to fight of the Clone Wars. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the one that I mean. And yeah. Okay. Is that, is yeah. that Kalani in that episode? Yeah, it's Ezra and like Rex. It's and Ezra, Kurt. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's Rebels. Yeah. And they, I was, they fight and then they're like, 
actually the wars change now. We're on the same side as the Empire. That's, that's now. Right. It's that's right. It's that's Kalani. Kalani. Okay. It's Kalani because he's like he's always calculating. They're they're, they're tactical. You know, droids. Mm. They're always calculating whatever the outcome is going to be, and as soon as it's not in favor of them. They end up switching sides to mm. whatever is favorable. <laughs> and right. they line it where he like he like points at his battle droids and goes, "Look at what you did. They're all naff now." Right. <laughs> and he, he says something like that. Their efficiency to shoot is bad. So he basically says that they have to shoot at Ezra because Ezra's more accurate than them. And it's just like he's just very, very arrogant, but he's not an idiot. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Very cool character, but it's yes. just the, the way he switches sides makes like makes sense of the set. Also, I just really like it. Yep. That's another yeah. thing that I have for him to sign. I kind of look at it and go, "This could be someone's favorite character of all the Star Wars." So you know what? I'm going to try and do it justice. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want I don't want to make a card and then someone that's his favorite character and go, "Ah, oh, whatever." Yeah, but keeping it true to the character and then making it yeah, mm-hmm. kind of strong. Um, yeah, that's where it's all. Yeah, yeah, well said. I, I like that. I, you know, personally, I'm, you know, I'm, like, I'm like an Afro fan now just because of playing Afro recently, and and there's a few other cards like I didn't really know those characters, and having played them, having experienced them, just like on the table, now it makes me more interested in them mm-hmm. in their original form, whether it's a comic or a show. So I, I appreciate that. Well, this is why Jared makes cards. Like, this was the whole reason you got into making cards, because you had these characters that you really liked and you really enjoyed, and you wanted to play with them. Yeah. Right? Exactly, yeah. So now whenever I look at it, I'm like, it might not be my, I'm going to be very precise, it might not be my cup of tea, but, the, you know, that, that could be someone's favorite character. So how is it my place to make them worse than the different characters that I like? Well, I think that's also the yeah. whole reason why this game is still continuing in so many different mm-hmm. facets, right? This is everybody just really enjoys the IP and the characters and the stories, and they want to continue to, uh, you know, obviously, you know, with you and with TCI, you want to continue playing this game and playing new mm-hmm. stuff, and that just grows right into it. Man, I, I love the three cards. The you did such an amazing job on Thank on you. these on these on these cards, man. They're they're really cool. Well, they fit really well together, and there's so many <laughs> so many things that you can do with them. Some some point back end of November, we're gonna have the release event. Please, anyone come down and check out CCI. It's on the deck builder the same way that you make a deck normally. It's all all on there. Have a little flick through. Um, find something you like that you haven't seen before. Build something with it, and then come and play. I know Echo Base do TCI events a lot. I believe that they have a couple coming up. The Discord is always open. People look for games like we have tournaments. Uh, take a little look. If you're getting a little bored of the best thing you play in the minute, you may not have looked at TCI. Just take a little gander. Yeah. I know, I know yeah. OTS, we play some web game TCI games here and there. So I'm sure with these spoilers and... and, uh, and yeah, This and, is the place to look for a game. Right, this exactly. Is this is the place. Come over on OTS and roll them real TCI dice. <laughs> roll, pull your ground battalions out and let's play. Yeah. That's right. You need to dig those bad boys out. <laughs> All right, gents. Well, this was fun. Drac, thanks for wearing two hats today. OTS and TCI designer. So, Polly, thanks for coming out, of course, as always. Of course, man. All right. Appreciate everyone tuning in today. Again, we've had Drac, who uh, designs for TCI. You know, look out for their new set coming out this month, November 2021. More info will be coming out on that soon. We'll put a link to their website and Discord in the description. And, uh, yeah, take a peek. So, all right, gents, we're signing off. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care.